guys, welcome back. Before we get started, uh, I just want to let you guys know that I am currently working on a 5th edition um, Orcs and Goblins Battle Scribe data file. Um, I'm doing it under 4th edition because none of the critical rules um, are really any different. Um, so once I get that done, I'm going to post that and try to make it available for you guys if I can figure that out. Anyways, let's get back into Imperial Knights and the Knights Errant. Of the varied types of Imperial Knights seen upon the battlefields of the 41st millennium, the Knights Errant excuse me, the Knight Errant is best known as a devastating close-range killer, a tank hunter extraordinaire. Enemy armor is quickly melted to no more than hissing piles of molten slag by the thermal cannon slung underneath a Knight Errant's mighty shoulder. Once a foe is sighted, a Knight Errant typically seeks to close the distance firing off hissing blasts from its thermal cannon as its great strides propel the walker rapidly forward. Thanks to their size, thick adamantium armor, and directional ion shield, knights errant do not hesitate to charge straight into the teeth of the enemy's most potent weapons. Once amongst its foes, a lone knight errant can, be, can best an entire tank battalion, shooting and stabbing its way through their formation to leave only twisted ruin and blackened hulls in its wake. The knight errant is a mainstay of many knightly houses. The strengths of the knight suit are perfectly matched by the aggressive, charge-the-foe nature of its pilots. Any enemies not dispatched by blast, blasts from the deadly thermal cannon, are quickly put to the test by the Knight Errant's Reaper Chain Sword. It is a trial that few creatures or war engines, no matter how massive or well armored, can survive. The adamantine teeth of the Reaper Blade can churn through ferrocrete bunkers or rip open a super heavy battle tank. Some knights errant choose a thunderstrike gauntlet over the great blade, using the unmatched power of its grip to bludgeon foes to the ground, to crush the innards of living creatures, or to rip limbs from enemy titans. Such is the awesome power of the Thunderstrike Gauntlet that tanks can even be flipped over or hurled aside to roll and crash amongst the knight's foes. Knights errant often spearhead attacks, and by a battle's end they will have smashed and carved their bloody way into the very thickest of the fighting. Even protected by their armor and ion shield, battle damage is common for such venerable engines of war. After each action, the hulking giants are literally crawling with sacristans, for most knightly households uphold the tradition that post-battle, a knight should not be seen with so much as a single scratch upon its livery. The ancient machines are lovingly cared for, with attention paid to every armor plate and sacred, unjuance lavished upon every cog. No less scrutiny is spent ensuring that the knight's personalized heraldry is likewise maintained, for the symbols it incorporates proclaim everything that a noble takes pride in, including his homeworld, house, oaths, rank, and his most lauded battle honors. Seems like their role in combat is not so different from Bretonian knights errant. Knights Warden. 
for forces of the Imperium pinned down by enemy infantry, there is only one sound more reassuring than the heavy, foot thudding footfall of an oncoming Imperial Knight. The whirling drone of the high-velocity Avenger Gatling cannon sounds a distinctive message, as do the telltale cracking explosions of its rapidly fired shots. Such noises let friend and foe alike know a Knight Warden has arrived. The highly feared Avenger Gatling cannon is like an oversized assault cannon. Though its larger caliber shells are more destructive, and its rate of fire is even more prodigious. A single blazing volley from the rotary weapon can stitch a pattern of death across a foe's battle lines, causing charges to falter and fail, or destroying entire attack columns of light vehicles. In support of this already lethal weapon, the Avenger Gatling Cannon has a built-in heavy flamer. I'm sorry about that, um, that weird noise. Hopefully that wasn't too awful. In support of this already lethal weapon, the Avenger Gatling Cannon has a built-in heavy flamer to flush foes out of cover. Any enemies that get through the curtain of deadly fire laid down by a Knight Warden must then seek to avoid the wide, sweeping blows of its signature close combat weapon, the Reaper Chainsword. This massive chain-doothed blade is typically used to destroy the largest of targets, slicing apart battle tanks or delivering the killing blow to Titan-class foes. It is this combination of mid-ranged firepower and close assault capability that makes the Night Warden such a formidable adversary and so popular amongst its allies. Trust in ye firepower, but keep thine reaper ready, Night Warden Maxim. It is not uncommon for some knight's warden to bear a thunderstrike gauntlet in lieu of the murderous reaper, using the energy-crackling power of its prodigious blows to hammer apart even the mightiest of foes. Old Dr. Seuss there. The Avenger Lance formation made famous by House Terran has been known to feature a trio of knights armed in such fashion. Upon realizing that they cannot match the might of an Imperial Knight, many of mankind's enemies will attempt to overrun the war engine with weight of numbers, or probe around their more vulnerable flanks. It is against tactics such as these that the Warden truly comes into its own, thanks to the volume of firepower it carries. Should fast foes, such as Tau Piranhas or Orc Buggies, streak around a knight formation's flanks, seeking to compromise the walker's ion shields, they will find a knight warden a formidable obstacle. Tracking the oncoming foe, the knight warden will fire short bursts from its avenger, quickly and efficiently turning such light-armored vehicles into burning wreckage. Because of their penchant for engaging enemies at close quarters, many Knights Warden also sport a turret-mounted heavy stubber upon their shoulder blade. So armed, Knights Warden have proven especially effective at halting orc charges and eradicating even the great swarms of creatures that are the hallmark, that are the hallmark of many Tyranid invasions. Knight's Paladin. Whether dueling across empty ash wastes or fighting amongst the narrow confines of a rubble-filled hive city, a Knight Paladin is an equally lethal foe. That is because the Paladin-class Knight suit is a perfectly balanced combination of speed, firepower, and armor a supreme example of combat design. 
Those nobles who pilot Knight's Paladin pride themselves on being able to perform any battlefield assignment with a plum. The Rapid Fire Battle Cannon grants the Knight Paladin the capacity to provide long-range fire support when needed, delivering volley after volley of massive shells onto the foe. However, while a Paladin excels in an artillery or anti-armor role, it is equally suited to close combat. The Paladin's bipedal design, agility, and speed allow it to engage the foe quickly, often by moving through or over terrain that would slow down more conventional vehicles. Its Reaper Chainsword can hack through even the iron hull plates of an Orc Gorkonaut with ease. With a single thrust from the powerful servo motors, can embed the blade deep into a ferrocrete bunker, ripping apart the defensive structure as well as any occupants. A pair of heavy stubbers one projecting from a ball turret and the other mounted alongside the mighty rapid-fire battle cannon give the knight paladin extra firepower allowing the adamantium armored giant to mow down enemy infantry and manage to avoid that managed to avoid its crushing feet Those soldiers of the Cadian 107th that still lived gathered around the edges of the blackened crater. They were wounded, blood seeping through makeshift bandages, some able to stand only with the aid of comrades. Yet all that could limp forward worked their way to the edge of the pit. They looked down in reverence, gazing upon their fallen savior. They that they lived was purely down to the heroic actions and noble sacrifice of the hulking knight that lay sprawled and ruined in the epicenter of that vast crater. The Cadian defensive line would have fallen, for the orc charge had been savage and unstoppable. Only the arrival of the blue armored giant had saved them. Many of the soldiers had never seen a knight, and they stared in awe as it strode into the midst of the foe. An adamantine colossus that crushed orcs beneath its tread. Long sweeps of the knight's enormous chain blade had turned entire mobs of orc walkers into smoking ruin, and all the while its long-barreled cannon blasted holes point-blank into the oncoming hordes. The green-skinned dead lay in piles. Hours later, a line of sacristans arrived to tend to their liege. They found the crater from the Stompa explosion still surrounded by kneeling warriors, the Cadians doggedly guarding the fallen knight each offering up silent prayers to the Emperor that the artificers could restore their savior. Knights Galand Impetuous, mad, beyond bellicose. These words and more have been used to describe Knights Galand, for they are considered by the majority of their peers to be the most reckless and combative of all Imperial Knights. Man and machine share the same traits. They are aggressive, bold, and difficult, if not impossible, to restrain. They long to attack, and will do so with unrelenting fervor. A noble destined to pilot a knight gallant will learn three basic tenets when he is bonded with his throne mechanicum. Depending upon the specific knight household or the ancient heritage of the throne, these commandments might be phrased in many different ways, but they all boil down to the same three truisms. Trust in your eye on shield. Make all speed toward the foe and strike swift and sure. Equipped 
meant exclusively for close range combat. A knight gallant will thus charge headlong at the foe, its immense strides allowing the bipedal giant to cover the battlefield swiftly. Once a knight gallant closes the distance, the towering walker can unleash its adamantine fury. The reaper chainsword deals death. Long, sweeping arcs of the blade will scythe down infantry or destroy light vehicles, while brutal stabs effortlessly chew straight through battle tanks or enemy walkers. Yet a knight gallant does not live by its blade alone for its other arm bears a thunderstrike gauntlet. This weapon, surrounded by a sparking nimbus of power, can deliver the coup de grace to anything on the battlefield. Its thunderclap impact can punch through any amount of armor plating, ripping the hearts out of enormous beasts and flipping vehicles onto their roofs. Although geared towards close combat, a knight gallant does bear a single ball turret mounted weapon. Typically this is a heavy stubber, its flurry of rounds used to pin foes down before a charge, or to decimate hordes attempting to swamp the knight through their weight of numbers. Some knights gallant opt instead for a melta gun, using its searing heat to dispatch tanks at close range. When a household formation of knights gallant take the battlefield, they are sure to attract a disproportionate amount of enemy firepower. Indeed, most foes will do anything they can in hopes of preventing the knights from reaching their front lines. Since the Great Crusade, there have been many tales of the devastation wrought by these aggressive knights, for their bold and reckless attacks have made them famous across the galaxy. It was a knight gallant that charged the vaunted heretic stronghold of Archaea Knight, smashing its way through thirteen defensive lines to batter down the citadel's gates. It was a trio of knights gallant that counterattacked the tyrannid invasion of Grotosphere, plowing headlong into a siege-breaking line of Carnifexes, blunting that Xenos offensive in spectacularly bloody fashion. Indeed, the great conqueror Solar Macarius is said to have favored the gallant lance formation above all others for breaking enemy battle lines. Knight's Crusader A knight crusader advances to the optimal firing position braces its mighty legs, and lets loose death. Blazing away with two weapons, a crusader sends forth a fusillade of heavy shells from its Avenger Gatling cannon, sketching deadly patterns across the foe's frontage. Its other weapon, a thermal cannon, causes the very air to sizzle as it hisses out blasts that can reduce a squad of Chaos Terminators to bubbling slag with every shot. With each sector it clears, the Crusader's steady advance brings new targets under its sights, and it continues to fire with every stride. The priority for a knight crusader is to find wide open fields of fire, and if the noble pilot gives any concern to his own shelter, it is but an afterthought. Each such warrior has long ago learned to trust in the strength of his crusader's ion shield, and his own skill in positioning it to halt the worst of any incoming firepower. Should the enemy press forward too closely, the Knight Crusader bears a heavy stubber in addition to the considerable crushing power of its stomping gait. Some Knights Crusaders
Crusader opt for a longer ranged weapon. Sorry about that. Exchanging their thermal cannon for the rapid fire battle cannon. House Raven has been known to employ a formation of knights equipped in this manner, a deadly grouping that can pulverize enemy battle lines at a great distance, saturating them with high explosives. Sir Gladius felt the machine's strain, for it was part of him. Although he sat upon the throne mechanicum, cocooned deep within unyielding adamantium hull, his mind relay shared with the ancient machine spirit allowed him to experience every sensation. He felt the immense pressure hammering upon the crackling ion shield, just as he felt the light rain pattering softly off his metal skin. With each lopping stride, he felt the whirring of overtaxed servo motors. The feedback impulse made it impossible to forget that his knight, his metal form, was badly damaged. That knowledge did not slow the night crusader, and it crossed the trench lines, stalking the enemy artillery. Runes and binary codes flashed upon Gladius's monitors, bathing the noble in bluish-green light. Klaxon signals warned of incoming shots as the heretic's shells came screaming downwards. Guided by the ancient voices which echoed through his mind, Sir Gladius shifted his ion shields as explosions blossomed all around. Within the heavily wired gauntlets, Gladius's mortal arms twitched as the towering knight's Avenger Gatling cannon sprayed rounds into the trenches around him, and his thermal cannon melted away heavy weapon nests. The flickering icons revealed the enemy artillery would be in range in a few more strides, and Gladius smiled as his knight's weapons locked on to new targets. And that is where we are going to bring this video to a close. The next section is about heraldry and is incredibly visual, and after that is the houses. So we will do that next time. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.